Hello YouTube, I am Orange Peter. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this coin explosion effect. So when I click, it spawns a bunch of coins, they bounce off the walls. When they hit the player, the player eats them. So he eats them like that. And if enough time goes by, they despawn. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If you check the description, there is a link to the source code, which also includes the art assets. And in addition to that, there is credits to all the artists because I did not make this art. All right, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So as a starting point, I have all the art assets. I have uh, some rooms, but the only room I'm gonna be using is this RM coin explosion, uh, which is just an empty room with some solids. Those solids, by the way, are one of the objects I've already made. The uh, important objects to note here are the player and the solid, because um, those have the basic platforming in them. Uh, although I guess we don't need platforming for this particular tutorial. Uh, the Goomba is not used today, and I've already pre-made the coin, which for now is just an empty object with the sprite assigned. Okay, so if we jump right into it, we can go ahead and jump into the creation event of the coin. And we're going to start off with dx equals 0 and dy equals 0. Uh, these are just the variable names I like to use for the uh, horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity. Uh, d just means delta, which means change in. So uh, this is change in x, change in y. All right. Uh, if I go to the step event, I'm going to break this into two blocks. The first one will be movement, the second will be despawning. So if I focus on the movement first, there's a number of pieces we can look at here. Uh, and the first one I'm going to do is the supply movement, which is pretty simple. We're just going to be adding the speeds to our dx and dy. And then if I look at the, and then next we're going to look at the vertical section. So for gravity, we're just going to be adding to our dy. And as a fun fact, um, the acceleration of gravity is the same for everything. Like in the real world, it's the same for everything. Everything accelerates to the ground at the same rate, um, which is why I made this match the same gravity I used in the player. So I probably should make this a global variable, but for now I'm just having them be separate things in each object, which making it a separate variable isn't a bad idea though. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put grav over here as a variable and then say plus equals grav. You might be thinking, what about feathers? Feathers go to the ground a lot more slowly than other things. Well, that's actually because of air resistance. And if you tried it on the moon, feathers would hit the ground at the same rate as any other object. There's a cool video for that in the description. So now I have um, acceleration for gravity. And now we're going to do vertical collisions. So we're just going to be checking that the place is not free at um, th the position we'll be at if we apply our vertical velocity. So normally I'd, I'd have some logic here for um, if you're about to hit something, go ahead and move contact solid and just stick to that thing. But since we want to do bouncing, we should uh, update this logic a little bit. So if dy is greater than or equal to 2, or I'm going to say 1, I guess. Then we want to bounce. Otherwise, if we don't have enough speed to bounce, essentially, then we want to move contact solid. And a very important thing here is I want this to actually be ABS. So I want it to bounce both if we hit the ground downwards and we have a positive dy, and I also, and I also want it to bounce off the ceiling if we have a negative dy. So that's why we have this ABS here. Uh, the only time I want to move contact solid is if we're just going really slowly and we can't bounce. Okay, so here's what bounce would look like. Um, we're essentially just doing some variation of dy equals negative dy. We're flipping our vertical velocity. However, if you bounce a ball, it's not going to bounce as high each time. So what we really should do is flip it, but also make it less somehow. And there's two ways to do this. You could do this linearly by just subtracting well, minus one or every time or something like that. Or you can do this using um, uh, geometrically or exponential decay where you multiply it by a factor every time to make it smaller. 
And I was actually not sure which one was more correct. So I kind of went all out and I did a little experiment where I bounced a ball, I looked at how high each bounce was, and then I used that to figure out what the speed was at each bounce. And long story short, the results were inconclusive. Uh, they didn't seem to fit exponential decay or linear very well, like neither of them. Uh, so I went with plan B and asked my physics friend which one it was, and he said it's exponential decay. So we're going to be multiplying this by some factor every time. And oh, by the way, my physics friend, he has a cool Twitch stream where he plays Celeste, so check that out if you're interested. So here we're going to be multiplying it by some bounce factor every time. And we're going to use a bounce factor of 0.5. And part of the reason I'm making these all in variables is so you can modify them later to make them feel just right for your game. In this case, if we have a high bounce factor, it's going to be very bouncy. It's not going to lose much energy at all every time it bounces. Make it lower, it's going to stick to the ground more. Okay, um, if we're going too slowly to bounce, we do move contact solid and dy equals zero. So move contact solid, this is just saying that if we're going too slowly, um, we want to close whatever gap we have with the wall and just sit there. So the just sit there part is this dy equals zero. We stop moving. Um, for as far as move contact solid, we have this ternary operator or a mini if statement saying what direction we need to move. Uh, 270 is down, 90 is up, and we decide which one based off whether our dy is bigger than zero. And then for our maximum distance, it'll be whatever our dy is. Let me see. Okay, uh, in order to test this out, we're going to need to add some debug code. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to the player, actually. And I'm going to add another block for debug. So what we want to do here is, every time we click on the screen, we want that to spawn a singular coin. And later, we'll make that multiple coins. So that logic will look something like that. So when we press the left button, we create a new object on the layer and we're going to just go ahead and use the layer of the player and uh, for the position it has to be on top of the mouse at mouse x mouse y and it's the coin object okay so if I hit play we should be able to test this out um, I do not have a player in the room let me fix that adding the player and while I'm at it let me add some more solids along the edges to give us some more to work with okay so if I click, mix a coin, and it bounces. And it has a weird bounce in the, at the bottom, which we'll fix in a second. But um, other than that, it actually looks kind of cool. Just with, just with the basic vertical bouncing, it already has a little bit of a cool effect there. Again, you can change the bounce factor if you want it to bounce more or less. But right now, it kind of comes to a relatively still state pretty quickly. So for as far as that shimming a little bit, um, I... I'm sure there's like a clean way to fix this, but when I was making this, I guess I was in a little bit of a more lazy mood. So the way I fixed this is I went to um, the coin object, and instead of making this bounce when it's anything bi bigger than or equal to one, I just made this a two, and that fixed it and still looks pretty good. So again, there's probably a better way to do it, but this worked. Okay, um, now let's do the horizontal collision. And this is going to be refreshingly simple because we're going to just copy our vertical collision, paste it, and then make all the adjustments. It's pretty simple. Instead of D plus dy, I'm going to do plus dx. Then I'm going to change all the dy's to dx's. Probably should have used find replace. And then with move contact, we need to be careful because if dx is greater than zero, we're actually moving at angle zero. Otherwise, we're moving at angle 180. So yeah, I just changed all the dy's to dx's, and the logic otherwise is exactly the same. So in order to test out dx, we need to give ourselves a little bit of a start dx. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to give myself a start speed and a start angle. And I went ahead and chose 8 for my speed, and I just went with a random angle between 0 and 360. And I made these both vars because I'm only using them in this event. And whenever you are only using variable temporarily, it's more efficient to 
use the var parameter because then GameMaker doesn't have to keep track of it later. So we have a speed for x and y, and now we also have a speed for whatever this random direction is. So the nice thing about it, about um, taking a speed in a random direction, is you can always break it down in terms of adding a speed in the x and y direction. You can think of it like a triangle with the speed in that direction and then adding up the components of the x and the y. Back in the day I used to derive how you can break down the triangle into its x and y components using sines and cosines and stuff, but luckily GameMaker has a function for this. So it's called length by our x, like so. So we're taking the length dire of length start speed in the direction start direction and this function gives us the x component if we move in that direction with that um, that distance and then I can do the same thing for the y and just change that to a y awesome okay um, now we can give this another shot there we go it moves in a random direction and we can see it bouncing off the walls in both the vertical and horizontal direction. And a side tangent here, I actually found it quite fun to set this to a fixed direction, like maybe 135, and just try to spot a bunch of points like that. I'm not sure why I find this satisfying, but it just feels good. So we've done, we've just done bouncing, and it, that on its own actually looks kind of cool. And a couple things you might notice that still look a little bit off. Um, for one thing, regardless of where I spawn these, they all seem to stop at the same corner. I think that has to do with how the horizontal bouncing works. Um, because the speed is relatively consistent, especially when I have one dire the direction set like this, they only have so many bounces in them, so if they always have two horizontal bounces in them, they're going to end up in the same spot in the end. So that's just kind of how that works. Um, the other thing that might look kind of weird to you is they're just kind of like ho hovering along the bottom like they're on a conveyor belt. And the reason it's doing that is because we don't have friction. This is what it would look like if the ground was very slippery and there wasn't any friction. So in order to make this look a little more natural, we're going to add friction. And that'll also solve this kind of weird effect where they all end up in the same corner regardless of where I spawn them. So yeah. Let me change this back to random 360, and then we'll go to step event and add friction. Friction, even though we visually see its effect horizontally, it actually has a lot to do with our vertical direction or force. So um, if you're not vertically touching every, anything, there's essentially no friction. If you are vertically touching something, like if you put your fingers on your desk, how much friction applies really depends on how hard you're pressing down. So like if you're not pressing down very much, it's going to be light friction. If you press down a lot, there's going to be a lot of friction keeping you from moving along your desk. So we're not actually going to go into that much detail, but, but the root of this is if you're touching the ground, there is friction. If you're not touching the ground, there is not friction. Um, so if not place free, if there's not any space below us, meaning we're touching the ground, then we're going to apply friction. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to by multiply it by some friction constant. And I'm going to just go ahead and set the friction constant over here equal to like 0.9. And we can try that out. And that should look a lot more natural. There you go. It actually like stops and slows down. And then to make this effect look a little bit cooler, let's just spawn a bunch of them at once. To do that, I'm going to take this instance create in our uh, d the debugging section of our player and just add a repeat 20. And of course, if you want to go crazy, you can add more. And by all means, go crazy. And that looks pretty sweet, if you ask me. Yeah, just a few lines of code but super satisfying. It'll add a lot to your game when, you're, when your player has earned these coins. You get that extra rush, hitting them all spawn in front of you like that. Okay, 
few more cherries on top. Let's make them uh, despawn by interacting with the player when they hit the player, um, as well as uh, just through waiting for a certain amount of time. After a certain amount of time, we'll just have them despawn. So let's go back to the coin. And for despawning when it hits the player, here's how we'll do that. If we're colliding with the player at our current position, then we destroy. That's all there is to that. Uh, for the despawning, I'm going to go ahead and go to the creation event set this up. I could implement this using alarm. However, I usually like to do this in code. So I would say um, despawn timer. I would create a timer variable and set it equal to however long I want to wait. In this case, three seconds, three times room speed. And then in the step event, I can say despawn timer minus minus. I can reduce the timer every step. And then once the timer goes below zero, that's when I'm ready to despawn. So I'll do the same thing, instance destroy. So there we go. That's the two ways we can destroy or despawn. And that should be our finished product. So let's see how it goes. So now we'll have that same satisfying coin explosion but when it hits the player, it dies, and if it waits three seconds, it also dies. Awesome. Okay, that is all for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I have a few um, notes for the end. This tutorial is actually part of a playlist where I'm making a castle-themed game using a bunch of platforming concepts. So in the final game, as you can see on the screen, I use this little coin explosion in conjunction with these Goomba enemies where if you jump on them they'll have coins pop out. So another next step you can take is to jump over to those Goomba enemies and see if you can uh, try implementing those in conjunction with these coins. So that is all for this tutorial. I hope to see you in those other tutorials and thank you so much for watching.